go grab your duck call because it's more duck calling today. I'm Joel Strickland and this is Surviving Duck Season. Surviving Duck Season is presented by Mojo and High and Dry Waders. Hey guys, welcome back to part two of Back to the Basics Duck Calling. Uh, now, if you missed our first video, we started out with some very basic sounds of duck calling, uh, how to make a quack, how to do a little bit of feed calling, that sort of thing. If you missed it, make sure you check that out. Now, today we're gonna be doing some, uh, some cadence calls, okay? Cadence are calls that have, you know, multiple notes in them. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the notes of a quack, making them sound a little bit longer. Then we've got a note progression, kind of like a scale in music. Da, 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 making, you know, one note steps all the way down the scale. So that's what we do. Now, how many notes are we supposed to do in a call? Um, there are all kinds of uh, sounds that, that ducks make. Uh, they sometimes just do three note calls. Sometimes they do five or six or seven note calls. Uh, but I've never in my life heard a 30 note highball that uh, what we call Main Street calling. And, and so I don't, I don't blow that kind of call myself, a hail call. Um, and uh, unless I'm just kind of joking around or something like that, uh, it's not something that we do in, in hunting. I know that there are uh, some people that like to do a hail call and do, you know, a 20 note hail call or something like that, but that's not something that I've found, at, you know, works for me. I've not been successful using that. So today I'm gonna to start off by showing you a very, very basic cadence. It's just gonna be a three note call. Quack, quack, quack. Three notes, the first note being the longest of the notes, and every time you blow a note, it gets a little bit shorter. Also, the pitch changes just a little bit. Just like that. That's a little bit slower than what you would, you know, normally do it while you're calling a duck, but I'm just trying to demonstrate what we're trying to do. I've heard ducks plenty of times just make that Just like with a quack, you want to cut each of your notes off with your tongue. You don't want to run uh, the notes together. That's a, a very common mistake that a lot of novice callers make is they kind of run their notes together. They just kind of kind of cut the air off with, the, with their throat rather than cutting it off with their tongue. And so it sounds like the, you're running all of the notes in your, in your scale together. So, you know, I, I can't even, I don't know if I can even do it, but. That's definitely what you don't want to do. Cut it off with your tongue. Just like that. And then once you, you know, once you've done it over and over again, it kind of comes to you, you'll be able to speed it up just a little bit faster and a little bit faster um, because ultimately you want to be able to manipulate your call so that you can blow a series of soft calls, a series of loud calls, calls that maybe are a little faster or a little bit slower um, because it's all different every day. My calling changes by the day and sometimes by the hour I try different things out and sometimes that means making it faster, making it slower, making it a little bit higher pitched, making it a little bit lower pitched and all of that is done with the control of your breath, the control of the you know, of the, of the air coming out of your mouth and from your diaphragm, like we talked about in the, in the previous video. And so, you know, that's the, the wind it's speed that comes through your, you know, out your mouth and in, in through the call. Um, that's part of it, but it's also the way you position your mouth. Okay. You can drop your jaw or squeeze it a little bit or push your tongue further forward, all of those kinds of things that you do to help you make the call sound a little bit higher pitched, a little bit lower pitched, a little bit louder, a little bit softer. These are all things you're gonna to have to try yourself and figure out on your own. I'd suggest you just practice doing that very basic three note call just to kind of get accustomed to making the pitch change and getting the, the lengths of the notes changed. <coughs> and 
and you can get higher. So just practice the three notes over and over again. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add to our basic three note call, we're going to add uh, maybe two or three or four more notes to it to make a greeting call. Now a greeting call is going to be the, the call that you use the most often in your cadences. Uh, I use it when I see ducks working out in front, I'm trying to get their attention. That's probably one of the most common calls that I use. Um, now you notice on about the third note, I kind of have a little, just a little whine to it. That's kind of just something that I do. So just practice that over and over again. Now while you're hunting, you don't have to only use a five note call. You can add a few notes to it. I do it all the time. Another cadence call that's probably my favorite is called a chop chop. Uh, a lot of guys have other uh, names for it. I, I, that's, it's the only thing I've ever called it is a chop chop and it's really kind of a responsive call meaning that when a duck makes a sound you sometimes hear another duck responding to that. So what I do is I put this call out um, if I maybe hear a duck quacking out in the distance or if I'm calling with somebody else I might kind of echo them in reply and so it sounds like this. And so if I was to put it together in a sequence, I might use the greeting call and then add the, uh, the, the chop chop back on the back side of it. And it goes like this. Okay. And so it's a very, very effective call. You want to make them turn. A lot of times I hit them with a chop chop call. You might, I might be calling and they're flying across and then I get real aggressive and really bark at them with that chop chop and a lot of times they'll turn and come to me. Another important call to be able to do in your arsenal is a comeback call and uh, we typically use this call uh, when we've been working uh, a group of ducks and they get to a point where you know they're either leaving you or maybe they've circled you so many times and then they keep getting wider and higher and you feel like okay they're they're not coming in. And so your last ditch effort is to hit them with a comeback call. My comeback call, I have a, a first couple of notes are very, very long and pleading. I'm begging them to come and I'm pretty loud with the call as well. And then again, I follow it up with a chop chop after I finish the first sequence on the, on the comeback call. So let me show you what it sounds like. And uh, oftentimes it works, you know. Uh, it doesn't work every time. Like I said, this it's a last ditch effort. And so oftentimes uh, the ducks don't like it. They already have trying to find a reason not to come in. And so they're gonna just keep on going. But sometimes it works. That's the three calls that I blow every single day of duck season. I, I, I'm a duck hunting guide in Arkansas. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very aggressive caller. Of course, we've got the quacks. Of course, we've got the different types of feed calls that we do. But as far as the cadence calls, that's pretty much my repertoire. Now, something we touched on in the first calling instructional video was about throwing the call, uh, using your hand to change the sound when you're blowing. Now, once you get confidence with your cadence, you should add this to it. You just open your hand up with each note of your call. With duck calling, you really need to be patient. Being really good at blowing your duck call, it's not likely to happen right away. Most guys can get good enough to go hunting in a relatively short amount of time, but actually sounding really good takes lots and lots of practice. 
Now, like I said in the previous video, blowing your duck call is a lot like blowing a musical instrument. And with musicians, it takes years and years to sound great. Duck calling is really no different. So be patient. Another thing to remember too, being great sounding on a duck call does not equate to shooting lots of ducks. The timing of your call is more important than the quality of your sound. Keep in mind that we do lots of things in hunting that aren't always realistic, but they work. And be glad for that. If ducks only responded to calling or decoys that looked and sounded 100% authentic, <laughs> there wouldn't be very many successful duck hunters. So that means in certain situations, a hail call works, the comeback call works, and guys that don't sound very good still shoot ducks. Now I have some time markers in the description section of this video that you can use to reference sections and quickly go back and practice along with me if you wanna do that. And if you like this video, please let me know. Leave a question if you got one. And if you're new to this channel, I've got tons of different types of content, hunting videos, tips, and all kinds of duck hunting related stuff. Follow me on social media. And if you missed my last video, check it out right there. And here's another one that you don't wanna miss right here. Thanks for watching. I'm Joel Strickland. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.